Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we're back for some more Baldur's Gate. So, in the last episode we were clearing pretty much the tutorial area of Candlekeep and we finished just in front of our foster father, Gryan. And let's see what he has to say. This is very unnerving, I know, but you must trust me. It is very important that you pack your possessions so that we may leave Candlekeep immediately. Hurry, for there is no time to tarry. The keep is well protected, but not invulnerable. So, what options do we have? Please, father, tell me where we'll be going. Alas, I cannot, for I have not truly decided yet. All that is certain is that we will be far safer on the move. Perhaps the woods might offer some secluded security, or perhaps the city of Baldur's Gate would offer cover amidst its teeming throngs of people. I do not know where we shall end up, but I have a few friends hidden there. Hmm. I will think on this. What could possibly harm us here? This place is a fortress and guarded beyond measure. Candlekeep is indeed a formidable obstacle for never duels, but is not it is not insurmountable. No matter how thick the mesh, at least one mosquito always finds its way through. No, my child, we must leave as soon as possible, for our safety and for that of our friends here. I'm ready to go right now. Listen carefully. If we ever become separated, it is imperative that you make your way to the Friendly Arm Inn. There you will meet Khalid and Jahira. They have long been my friends, and you can trust them. Ooh. Let's hurry, child. The night can only get worse, so we must find shelter soon. Don't worry. I will explain everything as soon as there is time. Wait, there is something wrong. We are in an ambush. Prepare yourself. Oh, God. You're perceptive for an old man. You know why I'm here. Hand over your ward and no one will be hurt. If you resist, it shall be a waste of your life. You're a fool if you believe I would trust your benevolence. Step aside and you and your lackeys will be unheard. You tell them, father. I'm sorry that you feel that way, old man. Damn. The dawn is especially cruel this morning. You awake with the realization that you have not been living some horrible dream. Ambushed, you saw Gorion cut down before your eyes, and even his powerful magic could not stop the onslaught. It was his wish that you flee, but that does not remove the feeling of helplessness that now overwhelms you. Hand over your ward, the armored fiend had said. He was after you and you alone, but why? If only Gorion had given some clue. But now you are alone and lost. Candlekeep is near, but you will find no quarter there. The readers pay for their serenity with rather draconian entry rules, and without Gorion's influence, their doors will remain closed. You will not last long on your own with your meager equipment. Perhaps you can get some help from the friends Gorion mentioned, the ones at the Friendly Arm. So yeah. Our journey with our foster father Gorion was not a long one. He fought bravely and he defended our, our protagonist from the evil armored man and his lackeys, but he could not hold them off indefinitely. So, with our father dead, we are now sad and must make our way into the friendly arm inn to meet uh, the friends that Gorion mentioned, which are Khalid and Jahira. Hey, uh, it's me, Emowen. Oh, Emowen. Sorry I followed you, but I never get out of Candlekeep and those monks are such a bore. 
Never any decent coin in their pockets, neither. I... I saw Ryan, and I'm so sorry. Kinda figured something bad might happen to you out here. How could you have known? Ryan did not even tell me. I do not want you looking over my shoulder as I travel. Take your nosy little self back to the keep before Winthrop sees you are gone. <laughs> so, I don't really like Imoen, but for the time being I'm gonna take her just so we can be defended on our way. I accidentally read the letter on his desk the other day. Can't remember exactly what it said, but it might still have. It might be on his, his body. Anyway, I'm not gonna let you wander around out here all alone. Never let a friend down, no sir. Stick with you until you say otherwise, I will. So, she's actually friendly. Uh, even though she's kind of annoying. <laughs> uh, but she may prove useful. So she's got some healing potions, which we're gonna take. She has an oil of speed. Which is very good. Doubles movement and attack rates for one hour. And she also has a wand of magic missiles. Other than that, she has a short bow and 40 arrows. Okay, so let's quick save the game. Execute and let's see. Order 66. Yes, execute it. Hello there. Oh, our first NPC, Colset. Well, a busy day for me today indeed. Strange noises throughout the night, and now a plethora of people strolling about the wood. You do look a touch more hospitable than the last two I met, though. Well met, stranger. I am called Colsid. Could you help me? My foster father and I were attacked last eve, and now I'm not sure where to go. Ooh. The carnage to the north must be the aftermath of your little skirmish, then. I am, more, I am most assuredly sorry about your predicament, though there be little I can do for you. I have nothing of serviceable value to impart, except common sense in a few directions. A ways east of here, you should find a crossroads. North of there is a friendly arm inn, which is where we want to go. And south is a town of Beregost. Both can offer shelter, though raids at a friendly arm are likely better. It is a friendlier atmosphere for the young adventurer as well. Staying close to the roads will make your journey safer, but that will depend on where you are heading as well. I cannot accompany you, though there were a pair of travelers not far up the road. They might offer some assistance. But I would be wary of the cost. I didn't like the look of them myself. Hmm. Can you do something else? I could use your help. I have little to give besides advice and goodwill. Make friends where you can, as traveling alone is almost certain death. You will want to surround yourself with like-minded companions, lest you risk making enemies in your own party. Aside from this little tidbit of wisdom, I'd say you're on your own. Luck be with you. To you as well. Fairly well, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Go away, old man. So, what can we find? Ah, this must be the adventurers he mentioned. You already be disturbed. Now leave me be. Your company be toil enough as is. Montaron. Hello there, kid. Rather strange place to be wandering, ain't it? My companion has something to say to you. Okay. Montoron, you are so aggravating! <laughs> disturbing to my demeanor! So this is Czar. Hold, Montaron, this young wayfarer is in, the, in need. Someone has set about thee, stranger, and you have barely escaped with your life. Aye, Czar, looks to have been roughed up quite well. Indeed, I can offer you healing potions if you wish, as a token of goodwill. Ah, I'd be grateful for any assistance. Nothing to fear from these simple potions, and I'll not even hold you in debt, though your conscience knows otherwise. Just like all good people. We have won a potion of healing. Perhaps as payment you would go with us to Nashkel. It is a troubled area, and we mean to investigate some disturbing rumors surrounding the local mines. Some acquaintances are very concerned about the iron shortage. Specifically, where to lay blame in the matter. You would be useful, though I'll not hold you to it. We are to meet the mayor of the town, a man named Baron Gastkill, I believe. Your conscience be our guide. Well, there is little else for me to do, I may as well go with you. Goody good good. We should make haste to Nashkel, just a short way south of here. Onward, intrepid friends. 
Rain it in, wizard. I can't understand the way your sense is split about. Could you just travel in peace? So, they are friends, but Montaron isn't really much of a fan of Zar, it seems. So let's put some more oil of healing. And the healing potions on Montaron, since he's our fighter thief. He is currently our frontline, which is uh, not the greatest news, because he's rather weak. Let me just see. He doesn't have all that bad stats, but the gear, mm, not the best. Still, we're gonna make do. So here we have a, um, a sign, Candlekeep Coastway. And now let me see if I can find something else here. Oh, enemy. Something okay, so. I must Wizards, go back. Imoen, shoot. Oh, nice shot. Yes. Our first kill. Now, one place we want to go to is actually the ambush site. Let's see if we can find our father. Our late father in this case. And here he is. Ah, good iron. So, our foster father had for us a belt, grind scroll and a dagger. Now this scroll... My friend Garion, please forgive the abruptness with which I now write, but time is short and there is much to be done. What we have long feared may soon come to pass, though not in the manner foretold, and certainly not in the prosper time frame. As we both know, forecasting these events has proved increasingly difficult, leaving little option other than a leap of faith. We have done what we can for those in thy care, but the time nears when we must step back and let matters take the, what course they will. We have, perhaps, been a touch too sheltering to this point. Despite my desire to remain neutral in this matter, I could not, in good conscience, let events proceed without some measure of warning. The other side will move very soon, and I urge thee to leave Candlekeep this very night if possible. The darkness may seem equally threatening, but a moving target is much harder to hit, regardless of how sparse the cover. A fighting chance is all that can be asked for at this point. Should anything go awry, do not hesitate to seek aid from travelers along the way. I do not need to remind thee that it is a dangerous land, even without our current concerns, and the party is stronger than an individual in all respects. Should additional assistance be required, I understand that Jahira and Khalid are currently at a friendly arm in. They know little of what is past, but they, will, uh, but they are ever thy friends and will no doubt help however they can. Luck be with us all, I am getting too old for this. E. Now, E, as we will soon find, stands for Elminster. And we also have a belt, which currently we do not know what it does. Now, what else have we got here? We can actually use one of the features that came with, with, with the Enhanced Edition, which is rather helpful. If you press this button, it just shows you everything that's on the floor, and it even highlights it. So we're going to take the ring. A sword. I don't want the Morning Star. <clears throat> now... Is everyone armored up? No, Imwen is not. So, take some armor. So yeah, she goes from 6 to 4. Same thing as Monteron. We're gonna give a short bow to Monteron. Let's actually... Divide our arrows. <clears throat> because... In Baldur's Gate 1... Air, um, ranged... Combat is much better than melee combat. Archers are indeed in advantage in this game. Okay, so what else have we got here? Order 66. Yeah, yeah. Execute Order 66. Now, in this starting area, 
I could explore the entire map, but I don't think there's much of a point to it. I'm just trying to see if I can remember some items that may be found. Ah, and I've already found one. Okay, so let's talk to, to Binkos. Hmm? Sorry, chum, but I can't stop the chat. There's been another caravan raided northeast of Baragost, and I must report of these dire straits to the Grand Dukes. A messenger's work is never done. Well, fare thee well, Mr. Traveler. And here is an hidden item in this very tree. And it's a rather good item, a diamond. It's gonna be helpful for when we need some money. Okay. And we reached the edge of the map. And where can we go from here? Ah, so you can see, here we have some a forest area, and upwards we have the friendly army in, and downwards we have Beragost. So let's travel to these woods. Oh, thou wanderer, stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. Old man. Oh, thou wanderer, stay thy course a moment to indulge an old man. It's been nigh and... Oh god, this English... It's been nigh unto a ten days since I've seen a soul walking this road, and I've been without decent conversation since. Travelling nowadays appears to be the domain of either the desperate or the deranged. If thou wouldst pardon my intrusion, may I inquire which pertains to thee? Not to imply anything, but how do you measure up to your own standards? Pestering strangers about their mental state doesn't seem all that well adjusted to me. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, like, I like the answers. A fair bit of desperate, actually. Might you know the way to the friendly arm in? I was told I might find some friends there. I am not so stupid as to listen to strangers in the middle of nowhere, no matter how infirm they appear to be. Off with you. We're gonna for go for the first one. Point well taken. And thou hast answered my query most adequately. I shall think of thee as determined instead. I shall trouble thee no more, as thou art more than capable of the task at hand. North is a friendly arm inn, where I am certain thou shalt find trustworthy friends awaiting. I have said too much and taken too much of too much time from thee. Fare thee well. Execute Goodbye, old man. 66. Ah, and by the way, this is Lion's Way. Candle keep to the west, coast to the east. Oh. More enemies. A diseased gibberling. Now I can actually swap to my sling. And we're gonna keep Zar in the back. He has some Minor Drain, which is a rather fast spell. And it drains 4 HP from the target and gives it to the mage. Okay, so in this case, Zar is gonna stand back and we're gonna fight the Ghibberling from afar. Yes. Execute order six. So for now we're gonna try and keep a distance because we're rather weak and I do not want to get killed. <laughs> so coastway. Friend Armin to the north, Beragos to the south, Lion's Way west to the candle keep. <clears throat> okay, so we wanna go north. Now in this area there's actually another Aha! Another hidden item. Right in this rock. And this item <clears throat> is an unidentified ring. Now, I could say that I do not know what this item is and I'll just keep it in my inventory until I actually figure out what to do with it. Uh, but in this case, I do know that this is a, a ring of protection plus one. So I can actually simply equip it and it's gonna go to our front line. And even though it does not say what it does, we can see right here the armor class of Montaron is currently 4 and if we equip it with the ring, it goes down to 3. Okay, so better armor class. So we're gonna leave it with Montaron for, for the time being. And we want to go north, to the friendly arm. Hello, pal. Hello, pal. Aeon, if you don't mind, please try to keep your voices down. There'll be beasties about with better hearing than we. You seem quite at home out here. What's the most dangerous thing you've seen? 
The most dangerous thing I intentionally went after? Stalked an ogre mage for a few days once, had a party of me on back then, killed the ogre, lost the party. Not really worth a trade if you ask me. I've seen more dangerous beasties, but usually over my shoulders I'm making tracks as fast as I can. No shame in running when your life is on the line. Off with you now, I've meat to catch. Uh, goodbye. And now we have a sign that tells us to go to the Friendly Army. Now, I've got to say that I do prefer the original cutscenes of the game. Uh, the thing is, the last time I played with a mod that put them back into the game, it actually... Uh, there was a bug where in the final fight of Baldur's Gate 1, the game would crash. And it... it not crash, it would bug out. You wouldn't actually end the game <laughs> it just stuck there because it couldn't play the final cutscene and then it just I couldn't leave it it pretty much um, soft locked or hard locked I guess the game so yeah this time I'm not playing with that so here there's another item this is also a very important item to get early on and this is if I remember correctly, I think this gives me... Uh, I think it's double the number of level 1 spells. Let me see. So I have two spells. I don't know if this is an immediate change. No, it isn't. But it's something like that. You get more spells per day. Only level 1 though. And it's, and it's also worth quite a lot of money if if you're playing with uh, non-wizards, I guess. So let's see what's in this little house. So be it. So be it. Yes? Joya. Hey there, you're new here, aren't you? Could I trouble you a moment? Tell me what you do need... Well, tell me what do you need, but make it quick. Yeah, I think you'll do fine. I need someone to go club some heads for me. I was ambushed by a band of hobgoblins within sight of this inn's walls. Robbed me blind, they did, and I want to return the favor. I don't care about most of my things, but I want to get my ring back. My father gave it to me, do you understand? I will do as you ask. I thank you. The creatures, the creatures were just north of the inn. I swear I could almost see them from the upper rooms. Bring my ring back here when you get it. You'll know it when you see it. It's a flame dance ring and very striking. Very well. Now, what else can we find here? Nothing. Let's quick save. And I since we have a thief in the party... Ah, ah, ah. Come on. Imoen. Oh, there we go. We have managed to successfully lockpick the chest. And there's nothing else. Execute order. Good. <laughs> now, up next is actually quite the hard fight. So just give me a second. And sorry, I'm back. Okay, as I was saying. Up next is actually a tough fight for when you're playing with the difficulty mods I currently have. So I'm actually gonna leave my character so back Something I could do no and we are gonna play with Mr. Montaron. He's actually gonna sneak. Execute order. Yes, execute order. Now we have... So be it. I could do no a other. weird person over here. <laughs> I've done had enough of this. Which is Mr. Tarnish. 
So what does Mr. Tarnish say? He says, Hi friend, I've not seen you here before today. What brings you to the friendly arm? Now, I'm wary of strangers in the road asking me stuff. So, let's not give too much information. I'm here to meet some friends. Let's imply we have more friends here. Oh, you must be who I'm who I am to meet then. I will take you to your friends, but first I should be sure you are the correct person. Is your name Palpatine? Mm, sorry, but no, I don't think you're the person I'm supposed to meet. Really? I would beg to differ. You fed the description, so I think it would be safe to assume you are the one I seek. Don't move. I have something for you. And yeah, so this is our this first major good. enemy. But our friend Montaron, he had the insight to scout ahead. So let's see if Montaron can give us an edge. What you want? Now, Imuin, you can shoot him with your arrows. I'm gone. Oops. And I am gonna make myself. Hmm. I'm gonna try and blind him. Stop touching me! Stop touching me! <laughs> While Tsar is gonna nuke him. So, let's see how this plays out. My blade <laughs> cut you down to size. Okay, so actually. Oh god, nice. So, Mr. Montaron has hit. He rolled a 14 with a plus 5 modifier to hit. Scored a 19. <laughs> and he hit. Tarnish for 15 piercing damage. So he's actually near death, and his yellow uh, circle thingy means he's panicking. So, what else have we got? He cast Mirror Image, okay, and now, given the damage it took, he has Morale Failure. So he's running. Okay, so at this point, there is no more need to actually try and blind him. Let's just see if we can kill him quickly. And Zar will probably do just that, because this should not miss. And dead. Okay. So, believe me when I tell you that this fight can go horribly wrong. <laughs> but since we dealt a lot of damage right at the start, he couldn't really fight. And he was just panicking after that. So, we've got some stuff here. So let's see. We have a quarter staff. We already had one. And now we have a new letter. A bounty notice. Be it known to all those of evil intent that a bounty has been placed upon the head of Palpatine, the foster child of Gurion. Last seen in the area of Candlekeep, this person is to be killed in quick order. Those returning with proof of the deed shall receive no less than 200 coins of gold. As always, any that reveal these plans to the forces of law shall join the target in their fate. So, we are being hunted. We don't know why, but we are. So we need to make ourselves scarce. Now, I've copied these two letters, so there's no point in actually taking them with us. We are, however, going to keep these scrolls. So we have a scroll of burning hands, a scroll of magic missile, and a scroll of armor. Okay. So, be so it. we have now made our way into the friendly arm. Hey, friend. Good to meet a fine side. Choppy. I can't stand the way the roads are cut off these days. My uncle's in Baldur's Gate, and I can. <laughs> God, this English. And I can't get there to see him. How come the roads are cut off? Where have you been these past few months? The roads are crawling with brigands and bandits after every scrap of iron you got on ye. Surely you must have fled some of your on your trip here, lest you came by the west road, that is. Well, for your sake and mine, I hope the roads clear up soon. I'll see you around. Now, why is the west road still open? If there's ever a book shortage, that road to Candlekeep will be the most dangerous of, of them all, I assure you. But these folks are after metal, so they're sticking mainly to the larger trade routes between Baldur's Gate and Arm. And guess what? This here inn is smack 
smack dab in the middle of it all. Okay, so... As we've talked about before, there's a shortage of iron. So brigands are starting to creep up on people traveling between Baldur's Gate and... Execute Order um, 66. Now we have Nessie. I hope our establishment's to your liking. Welcome to the friendly army. It looks like you had a rough journey. This place is a fortress. Why all the security? Bentley wanted the inn to be a safe haven for all sorts of travelers. Anyone can stay here, but we don't tolerate any troublemaking within these walls. Did Bentley build this place? It's so solid, it looks like it's been here forever. Oh no, Bentley and Galana didn't build the inn. They found it. They were part of an adventuring party, not unlike your own. In the first few years following the time of troubles, when all the gods were walking the surface of our world, the inn was actually the hold of a powerful undead priest of Baal, god of murder. With the evil cleric weakened by the death of his god, Bentley and Galana were able to destroy him once and for all, thus laying claim to this troubled fortress. They must have lots of stories to tell. I'm sure they do, but this inn is their life now, and they don't like to dwell on the past. You're as likely to get a tale out of them as you are to get a tooth from the mouth of a hen. It has been a pleasure meeting you, however, and I do hope you enjoy your stay. Thank you. What else have we got here? We have a cook. Yes? Hey, you stays out of my kitchen. You'll mess up my art. Someday I's gonna cook for the Duke himself. Bet you there's less fist fightings in the palace so as, <laughs> so as you can enjoy a meal from start to finish. Yes, yes. Quite well. Can I steal stuff? And nobody will notice. Oh, I like that. Yep, no. this way. There's a chest here. Actually, who's better at thievery? So, uh, Emoin, pfft, this sucks. She has open locks at 25 and Monteron has, okay, the same thing. <clears throat> so, this is locked. Lockpick failed, lockpick succeeded. So, 20 gold coins, not bad. So be it. Okay, who else have we got here? Ah. Uh, here we have someone that, for those familiar with the original Baldur's Gate, shouldn't be here. Which is this person named Dorn. Mm. It's about time. Bring me another flagon of ale. And you'll also notice that he's voiced. And he also has a portrait. And Dorn is actually one of the new companions that were added with the um, Enhanced Edition. I think you've mistaken me for someone else. I'm not your servant, get your own nail. Then why do you bother me? Be gone. Nothing would please me more. <clears throat> Even better quest, how rude. Ah, and here we meet our friends, or the friends of our foster father, Jahida and Khalid. How long must we wait here? Things stir to the south as we sit. Good day, friend. You are the child of Gorion, are you not? I recognize you from his letters, for he writes of you often. Forgive my manners, I am Jahira, and this is Khalid, my husband. G good to know you. We are old friends of your adopted father. He is not with you, I must assume the worst. He would not permit his only child to wander without his accompaniment. If, if he has passed, we share your loss. Gryan often said that he worried for your safety, even at the expense of his own. He also wished that Khalid and I would become your guardians, if he should ever meet an untimely end. However, you are much older now and the choice of your companions should be your own. We could travel with you until you get settled, help you find your lot in life. I, I, cannot <laughs> I cannot mimic someone that stutters, I'm sorry. I'm trying, but I can't. Uh, it would be a fitting last service to Gryan, though he should first go to Nashkel. Khalid and I look, it, look into the local concerns, and there, uh, and I look into local concerns, and there are rumors of strange things happening at the mines. No doubt you have heard of the iron shortage. You would do well to help us. It affects everyone, including you. We are to meet the mayor of the town, Baron Gastkill. Ah, so Jahid and Khalid are looking for the same person as Montaron and Zar. Now, your company would be welcome. 
I would rather choose my own future than leave Garayan's past behind me. I'll find my way on my own. I'm already going to Nashkel. My current companions wish to visit there as well. Indeed. Interesting. In that case, I think we should definitely travel as one. You can never be too careful about the dangers of the open road, wherever they may spring from. And there we have it. We have Jahira and Khalid joining our party. So, ah, we even have the journal updated. Jahira and Khalid would have a com me accompany them to Nashkel. As I have little else to do and few allies, I should devote some time to investigating the... Ah. Oh my god. Wait, sorry. Uh, so, this is me not being used to the keybinds. So, in Baldur's Gate, when you want a quick save, you press Q, and when you want a quick load, you press L. The problem is, L is usually logbook <laughs> in many other RPGs, which is what I just did, and I quick load the game. Okay, so, fine. Let's do this again. Your company will be welcome. Okay. And as I was saying, we now have a full party. So, these are six members. And I wanted to check out the journal, not the logbook, the journal. So, in important events, we have, as I have little else to do and a few, and few allies, I should devote some time to investigating the cause of the iron shortage in the region. My next stop should be the town of Nashkel to the south. As for Jahira and Khalid, they would have me accompany them to Nashkel. We have the quest for the Flame Dance Ring from Joya in the other house. And Zar and Montaron also want to go to Nashkel. And in the journal you'll have some information you pick up throughout your journey. And this is also, by the way, let me just check it. This is also where um, your notes go when you copy notes. So they come into the journal. Okay, so... <clears throat> Let's see here. Ah, something I didn't actually do. So, Monteron is a fighter thief. Uh, Xar is a necromancer, which is a, a mage specialization. So, he specializes in necromancy. Jahira is a fighter druid. And by the way, this means it's a multi-class. And Khalid is a fighter. So, these are pretty much our new frontliners. So, as you can see, Khalid has one armor class, which is much better than what Monty had. I'm going to give him the ring, so he now has a zero armor class. Okay, let's also do something here. We're going to pull these up. And we are going to leave the mage to the bottom. I'm going to stay on top because the person that speaks to the NPCs is the first person in your party. So we're gonna leave it like this. Good. Ah, and the items they bring. So, Khalid is currently equipped with a splint mail, a helmet. This is important. And why is this important? Because, because even though the helmet doesn't really have any stats, so this doesn't give you, I don't know, it doesn't give you strength, it doesn't give you more armor class, but it protects against critical hits. And this is very, very important. So, that's all he has. Jahira has a, a quarter staff and a mere leather armor. We're gonna have to fix this. Because they're, they actually don't have that bad stats. She has 14 dexterity, which is kind of low for her armor class. But Khalid actually has 16, so not too bad. What else? They have one healing potion and a potion of invisibility. So, 12 hours of invisibility when you drink this potion. Oh. There we are. Okay, so let's talk. Let's speak with Mr. Bentley Mirror Shade. Execute order 66. It's been dreadful slow business lately. I like his voice. Iron is the lifeblood of this whole region and it's sure painful when it gets scarce. So what can I do for you? What do you have to sell? 
Okay, so we can rest here, which is useful to fill up our spells if we need to. And what else have we got? <clears throat> we can buy some stuff. Which is actually something that we want to do. <clears throat> but first, I'm gonna have to check something out. <clears throat> so our friend, Xar. Something troubling you? What do I want from Xar? I want his spellbook. So he has Chill Touch and Larnock, uh, Larlock's Minor Drain. So we're gonna leave him uh, like this. So he has memorized two of these. Since Chill Touch is a, um, a touch spell, so the range is zero, he would have to go into melee range to actually use it. And I don't want to send someone with four hit points and a horrible armor class <laughs> into the front line. He's just going to get instantly killed. So he's proficient with daggers. Okay, he has a dagger. And Jahira, she is proficient with, ah nice, with a quarter soft, a sling, and a club, and two points in clubs. Ah, and yes, since she's a druid, she also has some spells, or does she not have some, ah, she does. <clears throat> okay, so she's currently equipped with two cure light wounds. Mm-hmm. And an Entangle spell. Now, I'm not much of a fan of these, so I'm gonna kind of reorder this. I'm gonna take away Entangle. <clears throat> and I'm gonna take one Cure Light Wounds, and I'm gonna take Bless and Doom. Now, what do these spells do? So, Bless is level 1 Conjuration Summoning Spell. <clears throat> it has a range of 40 feet, so it has a long range. It lasts for 6 rounds. It has a casting time of 9, which is a very long cast time. It takes up almost an entire round. And the area of effect is 15 feet radius. So what does this do? Upon, in uh, upon uttering the blast spell, the caster raises the morale of friendly creatures by 1. Furthermore, it, in it raises their attack and damage rolls by plus 1. The caster determines at what range, up to 40 feet, the spell will be cast. So, uh, okay, this is pretty much irrelevant at this point. So, what does it do? It does, uh, for the area of effect of 15 feet radius, everyone in your party is gonna get a bonus to his 2-hit um, skill. And it also gives you a plus 1 damage uh, on your attacks So it's 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 useful for just overall buffing up your chances to hit and deal damage and Doom is also a very useful spell because of a very important um, Aspect which is there is no saving throw to this spell. So if you cast this on someone it's gonna land It's level 1 alteration spell. It's a charm it has 20 feet range, it lasts for 1 turn, so 10 rounds. It also has a casting time of 9, so a very long cast time. And what does it do? This spell causes a feeling of doom to overwhelm the target. For the duration of the spell, the target receives a minus 2 penalty to all his rolls, including tech 0 and saving throws. There is no saving throw for this spell. So, the tech 0, as I mentioned before, is the ability to hit someone so two hit armor class zero so this makes it so an enemy a single enemy uh, is less likely to hit our party and is also less likely to save versus enemy spells in this cast our spells so it's a nice um a nice spell to have Okay, so <clears throat> let's try and make some money here as well. <clears throat> so, what can we actually spell, uh, sell? We have a diamond, which is worth 500 gold. Very nice. <clears throat> we have burning hands. I'm not going to use it. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to keep it. I'm going to actually keep it. 
Uh, really? Only two gold? I'm gonna keep this for now, <laughs> because I'm curious. <clears throat> now, what do I want to purchase? So, Jahida is proficient with clubs and slings. So I want to take one sling. I want some arrows for Imuen and Monty. Some bullets for Jahira. She can also wear splint mail, right? Yeah, she can. Can Monty also wear splint mail? He can. I'm also gonna take a lot of shields. And I think that's pretty much it. So let's see, he has a shield. She will have a shield, and this guy could also use a shield. So, two shields. <clears throat> uh, I only want to take one splint mile because I'm going to try and keep Monty at a distance. I wanted a club, though. And maybe a longbow? Maybe a longbow for Khalid, for when we're fighting from a range. Ah, there's the club. Do I take this though? <clears throat> 106 gold coins. Uh, sure, let's buy it and let's buy some... <clears throat> let's, see, let's see how how this ends up being... Wait, what? Ah, okay, <clears throat> so we can give Jahira a splint mail, which improves her armor class tremendously. We're gonna give Jahira a shield and a club. So we can also see this. So with the quarter staff, she has attack zero of 20. With the club, she has attack zero of 19. And now we can also give her a shield. Lowering her armor class further to 3. And Monty is also going to receive a shield. <laughs> it's almost bigger than him. But sure. <clears throat> we have a longbow. For our friend Khalid. We have a sling. For Jahira. Some bullets also for her. Let's give her these. And I'm going to purchase some more arrows. Actually, let me just split these up, I think. Nah, I'm going to buy more. So, you're going to take 120, and I'm going to buy some more. So... Like this, I think. Okay. I'm gonna sell these gems. <clears throat> I mean, I'm also gonna sell... Does anyone have anything else to sell? We have this to sell. We have a quarter stuff to sell. What else do we have to sell? Nothing else, okay. <clears throat> My inn is open to so all let's sell one dude <clears throat> let's see if someone else wants to buy our stuff 66 you must gather your party before venturing forth good yes. Now we're gonna go into the Temple of Wisdom and speak with Gelana Middershade, which I think is the wife of Bentley. For a bit of respectful coin, we can cure all uh, that ails thee, if you need. What sort of cures do you have available? Okay, so you, you can donate the church and this will actually 
help increase your reputation if you're in at a low reputation you can buy some stuff in this case potions there's something here that interests me by the way and we can also identify items and I think I'm actually gonna identify this belt ah this is something I'm not gonna be using <clears throat> but still I want to identify this dagger no not just yet Okay, so let's see if we can sell some stuff. No. Okay, so thank so you, Kalana. We're going back into the inn. So be it. <clears throat> and we're gonna sell our stuff there. Even though it pretty much gives us no gold. Your party before so be it. Board. To all who behave themselves. Okay, <clears throat> so let's sell the Warhammer. I'm gonna sell one dagger, the leather armor, the silver ring, both gems, and the belt of the antipod. Now, why am I gonna sell this? Because this belt. I was gonna say, because this belt is not very useful since uh, the most common element magic element you can find in the game is probably fire so doubling all fire base damage taken is usually a very poor choice <laughs> but since there's there may actually be some um opportunities to make this work cold resistance i'm actually gonna keep it for now so just selling off the extra stuff and so I'm gonna leave my companions here because this is where so I'm gonna continue the game in the next episode and see what we can find on the upper floors so yeah I'm gonna save the game here and it's gonna be Palpatine 3 and yeah so as always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you guys are enjoying Baldur's Gate. As I said, this is probably my favorite game of all time. Uh, both the first Baldur's Gate and the second one. I count them both as my favorite game. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions about the game so far or any thoughts about the game, leave a comment. If you guys wanna get notified about future uploads, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe everyone.